welcome to CCAP Family Health Services. It's a wonderful day um, to celebrate additional funding flowing into Rhode Island, Rhode Island's health centers to help our fight on COVID. Um, some of our CCAP heroes are here um, who led our fight uh, against COVID. So I do want to recognize them and thank them very, very much, our medical people. So this year I celebrated my 42nd year at CCAP um, and throughout those years I found myself thanking our delegation so many times um, for, for just being advocates for everyone, for the disenfranchised, for those with limited choices and for those who struggle every day. This funding is yet another example of your leadership. Our year-long experience with COVID has shown increased health disparities in minority and low-income populations, high rates of disease, transportation resources, and other resource issues have impacted these communities. This funding, this new funding, gives us the ability to increase access for these residents for COVID education, testing, and vaccines. During the last year, we learned how to pivot. We created testing sites. Then we pivoted and created vaccine clinics. We're pivoting again, and soon there'll be an RV fully staffed with medical staff traveling the city of Cranston to provide education, testing, and COVID vaccines. And we're so excited to bring that resource to the city. Um, we can't wait. So again, I find myself thanking you uh, for your steadfastness during the last four years, for your love of Rhode Island, but most of all, for hearing those whose voices are not always heard. So thank you so much. And it is my greatest pleasure to introduce Senator Jack Reed. Well, thanks, Joanne. Uh, and I want to... Uh, Thank you and Merrill and all your colleagues for what you've done over the last few months. It's been extraordinary. And let me also thank Jim and Jason who've been out there to ensure that there's equitable distribution of the vaccine. Everyone must be vaccinated. It's uh, not zip code related, it's health related. And of course, Secretary Jones, thank you for being here. Thank you very much. Last, but certainly not least, two gentlemen who paved the way to get this legislation done in Washington, my colleague Jim Langevin and David Cicilline, who are extraordinary advocates for the state of Rhode Island. And this effort started in the House, if I remember correctly, and thank goodness for that. Uh, we are here today to thank, again, all the people who have been so critical to the success and the effort over the last several months. The doctors, the nurses, uh, the staff of CCAP, of the Providence Community Health Center, and health centers throughout this state. They've been absolutely vital to treat patients, to test patients, to get the COVID vaccine out. And I'm pleased to announce today that the state of Rhode Island and the health centers in particular will receive $33.5 million to continue this work for vaccination and testing and COVID response. And that includes $2.9 million for CCAP, okay, and $9.7 million for the Providence Community Health Center. So uh, thank you. And we could not have done it without your great help, all of you. I can't emphasize that enough. And as you know, the overall COVID package included $14 billion throughout the United States for COVID-19 vaccines nationwide so that the community health centers can continue to play a critical role as they have. You serve the most vulnerable people in our community and you do it so well. And I thank you again. It will allow an investment in what Joanne spoke about and getting vans that can go door to door and making sure that's enough testing and enough vaccinations for everyone. In addition to the $11.5 million health centers in Rhode Island received last year, this, this money adds more. Now I have a much longer speech, 
but the winds of change are blowing. So let me just say, I want two more things. We've got to do a much better job in vaccinating our communities, the Latinx, the Afro-American community, all our communities of color. We are not doing the job. And until we do that job, we haven't finished the task ahead. We've got to do that. And let me also say, uh, I, the good news is that Health Source Rhode Island has extended its sign-up deadline to August 15th. If there is anyone without insurance or anyone who has difficulty affording insurance, please contact Health Source RI.